Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel that dedicates itself to smartwatches and smartwatch technology available on the web at smartwatchticks.com. And we're here to combat the summer washout. That's right, from Zaples. Both of these products will help you see your smart device outdoors because they have screens that get brighter in the sunlight. We're going to look at both of them, and we're going to start this review with this one. Da -da -da -da. It's the Hezvit, Hezvit, Hezvit Band S3. Look at the interesting packaging here. We um, made to hang off of a rack at your local surf shop, right? <laughs> yeah, sure, middle Oklahoma surf shop. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, well, what else? Let's see. <laughs> we are going to pull out the interesting band. Look at this presentation. Now, some of you guys could get a real neat idea for this. Um, in the different watch companies of how to make your product more three-dimensionally uh, attractive. There it is. There's a charging uh, cable, obviously, that comes with it. That looks like it might have been a cover on the front of it. Standard USB connection, okay. And a manual, which we're gonna get into after I tell you that you can get this puppy from Zaples. That's right, Zaples. It's the S3 uh, smartwatch fitness band. And as you can see from the display, all the data is going to appear in one spot. Now, that's not all fancy changing screens and stuff. But for those of you really wanting to just glance at your watch when you're outdoors in the bright light and see everything you need to know, you'll be able to do it with this one with standby time of 7 to 10 days. Look at all of this. Here's the features. Full information is all in one screen. You can use it without the phone. You can read the data even on a plane. Wow. <laughs> you got more than 10 indicators with the multi-indicator monitoring, automatic on the hour or manual heart rate monitoring as well. And you can sync to the workout app on your phone using Bluetooth, but you don't need to have it with you when you're doing all of that. So let's take a look first at the manual. Hezvit. Uh, it looks like it's a full color manual in Chinese on this side. Well, maybe it's all in English and Chinese. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a one page thing. It's in multiple languages. And we want this one. That's the English quick start guide. And if you blow this up on your large uh, tablet or TV, it'll probably be legible to you. Now we're done with that. Let's get into it. We've got a TPU band and uh, has it written right on the edge. Okay. Whoa. In there tight. There. Got it released. And... I like that. You know, I might store maybe this watch or one of the other ones on there, presentation kind. There it is. And it's off, so we don't see anything. But we have a heart rate uh, monitor on the back and a little silver button right there. Somewhere in this, we plug in the USB to charge it. Looks like it's right there. Okay. Um, yeah. Whoa, okay, there we go. There we got it on, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> well, there's only one button, so let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Come on, do something. Mmm. Nothing. All right, I guess I got to charge it. But before I do that, I know some of you saw stuff on here that you wanted to read more closely, like... Uh, the scannable QR code that we're going to need to download the app by that name. Yeah, once I do it, I'll let you know what it really is. And here's the layout of what's on the display. <laughs> I love this manual. Everything's upside down, every little section. So it's full of display information. And as you can see right here, each of the lines have all of these different uh, meanings. So keep this close as a guide, and we'll charge it up and 
See if we can get some real data in here. There, I've got some good data on here, and we definitely need this chart to interpret it. On the left, you see the actual uh, data on my arm from yesterday, actually, to through last night to today. And you see up at the top, we have the time and the battery level. And then, according to this chart, the upper left is your step count. I got 265 so far for today. And right below that, that represents the calories burned. And to the right, we've got the mileage, not much, 0.1. And then the sleep time. <laughs> really good last night's sleep. Uh, I definitely needed it. Nine and a half hours worth. See that? Now we get down to some really fun stuff. On the left, we drop into the heart rate. That's typical. But look just below that. Wrist humidity. That's how much I'm sweating. That little silver thing on the bottom is a temperature humidity type of a sensor, apparently. So I've got my heart rate and my humidity. And on the right-hand side, this is where it gets wild. Look at this. I've got 91 degrees is my current wrist temperature. Okay, that's actually on my wrist. And then below that is 88 degrees. This is all in Fahrenheit. And that's uh, the ambient wrist temperature okay so there's wrist skin temperature and then wrist temperature and as you'll learn as we go through this that difference is important yeah it tells you how hot your body's getting compared to the immediate ambient i mean this is really wild folks i've not seen this kind of data and did not expect that on this little uh band i thought it was just going to be a Basic, inexpensive thing with a LCD screen, easy to see outdoors, but it's way more than that. In the bottom left, we have the current barometric pressure. And as all of you know, right, you can predict the weather on the changes in barometric pressure. And as you'll see in the app, you can actually get an hourly reading of barometric pressure day after day after day. So you could do your own weather predicting just simply by looking at the trend in that lower left-hand number as you analyze it on uh, the app. And on the lower right-hand corner, there's nothing entered there, but there is a space for a date, and that's a date reminder. That's not the current date, but there's a way you can set up reminders in the app, and uh, that's uh, the date that would show up there. Then the button at the bottom is how you light it up, and when you light it up, it's got strong backlight. Look at that. Easy to see outdoors, and a um, few seconds on, and it goes off. When there's an alarm, and there's some cool alarms in here, like when your temperature exceeds 4 degrees centigrade, I believe, 7 degrees Fahrenheit, between your wrist and the wrist, close to wrist and the wrist skin temperature, it'll flash at you. It'll flash if you hit goals, if you exceed thresholds, all this stuff. And that comes in the app, so let's take a look at that. When you scan the QR code, or you just simply put in HESVIT in the uh, Google Play Store, you come up with two options, and they're recommending in the QR code that you install HESVIT. But there's also this HESVIT band. And uh, later I'm going to do a separate little video, if it works, to tether with this one, because it looks like it's a little more sophisticated. And that'll be a spin-off little video that's uh, available for subscribers only. There'll be a link in the show note if you're a subscriber. Click on that link, and it'll take you over to a video as we take a look at this particular app it's got some cool stuff let me just show you briefly see here's our band the same one that we're working with but it didn't recommend this one but i wanted you to see some of the data layout that you would get and some of the charts that you get and some of the information related to sleeping and this one where you get heart rate wrist skin temperature and here wrist humidity wrist temperature and barometric pressure all graphed together in this particular app. So I really hope it'll uh, link to this one. Uh, but right now we're going to go with the one that they recommended, which is already set up and installed. This has a little intro to show you that you won't be seeing because it goes through um, at the very beginning when you set up an account. But I'll show it to you now. And then you say try now and you're out of here and go right into the app. Or as I've got it set up, I'll just open it. As it opens the Hesvit Health app, it synchronizes the data if you have any, and you drop into this home page of these three items that you can go into and a tab in the upper left. Let's start here 
and show you that you can set up your parameters that you're going to be working with. These are pretty much generic. Uh, you can also change your password on your account that you've set up on either your phone number or your email address. And you can check out your device. When it's loaded up, it shows you the picture of the uh, Hesvit S3. You can unbind it. It shows you your battery level and you check for upgrades. And there was an upgrade to this one. So when you first get it and first tether it, run through the upgrade. It takes a while, um, but it's well worth it so that you can get the latest uh, software, firmware installed in there. Then you can go in and set some things on your watch, which is awesome. Of course, you can set your target number of steps and you can set a sedentary reminder, which will let you know when you need to stand up and get some exercise, right? Here is a heart rate reminder. Now look at this. In the normal cases, they say your heart rate's not exceeding 100 beats per minute um, and so forth. So you can turn on a threshold reminder. If it's like you're a sedentary and, and, and you want to know if you just peak over 100, you can do that. Or you can go in here and set it anywhere from really low up to really high, up to 150. So if you're going to be um, burning calories, uh, doing an intense aerobic exercise, something, and you want to set an upper threshold, you can do that. I'm leaving it at 100 just so I can test it out. That's on there. Now, watch this. Temperature difference reminder. Here's what I was telling you. Okay, it, 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 and when you change units, this changes to centigrade. So you can set, you don't really have uh, too much flexibility here. There's 7, 9, or 11 in terms of degrees different uh, that it will notify you. But if your temperature difference exceeds that threshold, the screen will flash on your wrist. You don't have vibration in this one, so that's one drawback. You have to kind of see that screen flashing. But you do have this alarm for um, measurements that we've never seen before that can give you information on maybe, maybe you're getting too hot. Uh, your body needs uh, hydration and to cool down a bit, especially in this hot summertime right now. The difference between your skin temperature and your wrist temperature close to your skin is what they're talking about there. That's uh, an alarm you can set. You can turn on or off automatic upload to the cloud, and you do need to register yourself with an account to even get in and use this app. So you will have an account. You can send your data to the cloud if you want. You can switch metric or imperial, and in the US we're doing that, and the 12-hour system as opposed to 24, and that's all in your settings. And that gets us into about. This is all about the company. And um, I'm just going to flash it on the screen for a moment so you can freeze frame it and read it because it's an interesting read about this company and how you can use the help. And they've got an extensive help in here that's integrated into the whole app. It's how you upload the data, okay? how you register and log in. So I don't have to guide you through doing all of this. I'll just show it to you here. How you bind the S3 and then how you can view your detailed data within the app. There's a, a section you'll see where we can share your personal data if you set up uh, friends uh, who also have the app, and your default personal data, which we already showed you where that is. The charging port is on the side, and it looks like it's going to hold a, a charge for a long, long time. When you do the uh, heart rate, this tells you basically how to do it. It's also doing automatically every hour. And the key down below, which you press for two seconds, and wait till you see the little double dashes right there, and it'll start doing your uh, heart rate. And also the other measurements that kind of go along with that. We are running 4.0.0, and it's the latest version after doing the update. And that's it for the uh, about. And then, of course, you can leave some feedback as well. So now we drop into these three things. I'm going to hit the last one first because there's nothing here. 
You can create a kinship card. You can do that by pressing here. You can connect to your friend's account and you can check your friend's data. As you can see kind of from the picture, this is good for monitoring parents, grandparents and whatnot. So if you're a millennial with a elderly in the family that doesn't know all this technology, but you can get them to wear the band, you can probably monitor remotely uh, their information, especially if you have it set to automatically upload to the cloud, right? Cool stuff. This is going to be wild, but we're going to go into bodybuilding first. This is a typical place where you see a circular thing showing your goal achievement against your uh, target. And I've just put it on 265 steps wandering around to get ready for this video. And there's your basic uh, stuff. It can tell from a walk and a run and uh, it will distinguish that and you'll get your steps for walking, steps for running, total calories and mileage right here. And you change day to day simply by sliding through like that. Target will update if you change your target. And this is basically telling you once you hit certain levels, you'll unlock achievements. And this is your step statistics. And here's all of that's pretty self-explanatory. Here gives you a weekly or monthly synopsis. And since I just started it today, that's what I've got going. Very, very basic but a good cumulative history so you can kind of uh, threat, threaten yourself, <laughs> uh, encourage yourself to do better week after week. <laughs> threaten yourself, shame on me. Health monitoring, folks. Pop the popcorn now because this is fun stuff. This is really amazing. I really did not expect this on this band. Sleep quality, very basic. Uh, Nothing really to write home about here except my target was eight hours and it filled all the way up because I had a really good nine hours and 32 minutes last night broken into these categories. I do not have a graph like you see on some of the watches uh, and bands that tells you exactly when you were in deep sleep or light sleep. You know, this doesn't go anywhere. Um, there's basic information that tells you you can see your sleep statistics for the week, share it and your categories and you can change day to day right here but you just get this circle so not a real uh, deep analysis of your sleep but enough if you wear it to bed to capture your sleep quality and it shows it again on the band right here in uh, the second one down that's your sleep time from the last night heart rate monitoring now is a bit different when we get in here you see the uh, hourly readings, and if you see an F, it means it failed. And if you see it in red, that means you manually uh, activated it by pressing that button for two seconds. Uh, and if it's in black, those are the automatic measurements. And they're plotted, of course, uh, on a graph. And I have nothing yesterday. They were all there. Okay. I do have some of the temperature um, information from yesterday, but it didn't have the automatic heart rate turned on at that time. So I don't have heart rate data, but you get this chart and that's gonna tell you information. And of course, you've got your weekly uh, maximum and minimum, and you see the dot showing up there on Friday and so forth. And this is week by week or your monthly statistics as well. Now, this is where I wanted to show you. Beyond the share is a help, and this is a more extensive help. And, uh, I'm going to leave this here for a moment and let you take your time to look at it because, first of all, it's written in really nice English, and um, <laughs> I like that. Secondly, it's got some really good uh, technical details that's worthy of knowing beyond what just relates to this particular device, but all about cardiovascular health, maximum heart rates, your targets for a uh, safe range, how you calculate your target heart rate. See that? Yeah, this particular... Now, you can download this app right now. You can read this all on your own. If you can get in, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to be um, restricted um, to have to log in first. Some of these apps, you have to do that, and honestly, I didn't test that. So if you download it and it says you got to set up an account uh, to get in, well, do that. Uh, but if you still, I don't think you'll have to bind to a, a watch in order to read the help. 
But if you do, well, you may need to get your band or just read it here. So anyway, that's the information on the heart rate. Now, now we're getting fun. Your popcorn ready? All right, kick back. Here we go. Wrist skin temperature. It's loading that data, and it's downloading it, apparently, as, as it's doing this each time it goes into it. And now I've got some skin temperature data from midnight last night. Pretty high in terms of, uh, I don't know, you know, if we're 98.6, our skin temperature is going to be 92, 91 when you're laying in bed sleeping. When you're up moving around, it might go a little lower depending on the ambient temperature and what you're doing with your arm and whatnot. But there's my readings, and here they are plotted on the chart for wrist skin temperature. Here they were yesterday. I put the band on about 4 o'clock, got it all synced up, and... Um, the automatic readings were kicking in, so that took us all the way to 11 p.m. So there's my risk in temperature from yesterday and today. Nice, huh? Well, what is important about skin temperature? Glad you asked. You got your popcorn? Good. <laughs> this takes a little while to load this particular page. I presume it's going off to a server and downloading this stuff because... Um, if it were on uh, in the app, you know, it would come in right away. So wrist skin temperature indicates the temperature of your human wrist skin, and it varies at morning and night among parts of the body between males and females, and so forth. So as you go through here, you notice that when you hold that button for two seconds to get your heart rate, it's also going to take a uh, skin temperature reading. Uh-huh. And more information about it. They're uh, talking in degrees centigrade, but as you see, this unit can switch to degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and the four degrees centigrade difference is uh, seven degrees uh, in Fahrenheit, four degrees centigrade. Okay, so that's about skin temperature. But wait, there's more wrist temperature and humidity. That's wrist skin temperature. This is overall wrist temperature and humidity. The humidity being between the device and um, your wrist, as far as I understand, in terms of how much you're sweating. Okay, so our wrist temperature is lower. Look at that. Because I was up in 90, you know, 89, 90. It's a little bit lower here. And I got two different things on the chart. And it's nice because it's got the actual numbers on the axes. Here's yesterday, look at this, where my skin temperature dropped and my wrist humidity was increasing. Too early to know what that means. Maybe I washed my hands and got water up there. I don't know. But anyway, there's some data on that. There's today's data here. And you're in luck. There's some more information in the instructions on basic wrist humidity. So this is the air humidity, the air humidity between the wrist and the device. It's an overlay of the wrist skin humidity and the environmental humidity and different from basic environmental humidity. Yeah, perfectly clear, right? Anyway, continue reading through here. We have the automatic every hour. Uh, the most comfortable humidity, they say, is between 50 and 70 percent. When it's high, 80 to 95 percent, that means you are sweating. So if you're out working out, you probably should see your wrist humidity climb so much so that you may need to take the band off and wipe it off and wipe your arm off. And here's wrist uh, skin temperature, which is different than the other skin temperature. Uh, this is wrist temperature, not wrist skin temperature. And this is the air temperature between the wrist and the unit. They're talking about an S4, but we're working with the S3 here, so same concept. Automatic test as the other one. And again, their most comfortable environmental temperature in the summer and in the winter and so forth. Yeah. Okay. And that is the information on wrist temperature and humidity. Now we get into atmospheric pressure. And this is what I was saying. This is pretty cool because you get an hourly barometric pressure reading in millibars. And here they are. Look at this. 
106, 105, 106, 107. Yeah, if you know about weather, you probably know how to work with this to predict what tomorrow's weather is going to be. And you'll see it on a chart. And it started yesterday, so I have all of yesterday's readings as well. There's no technical prediction for you or use of that information other than it gives you guidance on what the air pressure may mean to you and why I guess it's on the band. It says 113 millibars is the most comfortable, but on a plane, if you're flying, of course they reduce the pressure so uh, that it's not that big a differential between inside and outside, which is really low pressure. And you probably could see that on uh, if you wear your band uh, on, a, on a plane. Nice, huh? Okay. And then the date reminder is a simple thing where you can go in and set up a particular uh, project or uh, whatever you'd like. Set the date. Set whether you want it one time, weekly or monthly. And a 1 to 10 character description. And then that's what's going to show up in the date area. Uh, on the band itself down there. One possible use of it that I was thinking of, if uh, this is going to be worn by a female, is you could put in your 26, 27, or 28 day cycle, maybe? I don't know. don't know if you have that flexibility. It said monthly, but anyway, you can put something in there and uh, remind yourself of it. Upcoming birthdays, whatever. I think there's only one, but yeah, you can give that a try. And that are, is all of the goodies in the health monitoring area. The bodybuilding was the full synopsis of your step count information. And the rest of it is history. Yeah? Okay. That's the HESVIT app. And once again, for those of you who are subscribers, I'll be installing the HESVIT band uh, app, which... Looks like it's got a little bit more sophisticated graphing information uh, and charts, uh, but pretty much is accumulating the same data. So check the show notes down below for a link to a little video where we dive into the HESVIT band. Uh, if it syncs up, if it doesn't, I'll just put a note in, the, in, in there that it, it didn't sync. Uh, but if it does and you're a subscriber, you can take a peek at that one too. Okay, we... I got this band from Zaples. Um, Zaples has some off the wall, usually very interesting stuff you don't see everywhere else. And this is definitely one of those. Again, it's summertime and it's outdoor time. And one of my goals was to bring in devices that have always viewable in the sunlight screens. And that was the intent on this one. And we've also discovered along the way that it does some really fun stuff related to humidity temperature, barometric pressure, as well as step count and heart rate. And you can pick this up with the link in the show notes, and I've definitely got a coupon in there for you, and you can go over there right now. All right, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Again, we appreciate your subscription. You're going to gain some access to some new stuff soon, and we will see you again in the future. Thanks for stopping by.